Rotten durian causes college evacuation. Ugh, what's that smell? More than 500 students and professors were evacuated from a Melbourne college over a suspected gas leak. The putrid panic started when students and staff in a library building reported smelling gas. They were then evacuated by the local police force. After an extensive search of the building for the gas leak, firefighters discovered the stank was actually coming from a rotten durian left in a cupboard. According to the BBC, firefighters said a fantastic aroma spread through the building via the AC. For those unfamiliar with the tropical fruit, the smell can be a bit pungent. And it does smell a bit like gas, but farty gas, though. According to the Melbourne Metropolitan Fire Brigade, the building has been all cleared. Although that rotten, dirty gym sock smell may linger for a bit longer. Still hungry? Keep watching. Apple costs woman $500 after she doesn't declare it. A Colorado woman is mad after she was fined 500 bucks for bringing an apple into the U.S. According to Fox News, Crystal Tadlock was returning from France to the U.S. of A. when the crew on her Delta flight handed out apples. Tadlock kept hers for later, and as we're about to find out, Tomo sapiens, this was a costly decision. Tadlock's carry-on luggage was selected for search at the airport, and no points for guessing which of your five-a-day the customs agent took issue with. But she got the apple from the airline, so that shouldn't be an issue, right? Wrong. U.S. Customs and Borders rules stipulate all agricultural items must be declared. And that freebie wound up costing her 500 smackers and fines. But it could have been much more. One look at the general food section of the U.S. Customs and Borders website and you'll see why. It says, failure to declare food products can result in up to $10,000 in fines and penalties. When in doubt, keep it out. Yikes. Tadlock explained to Fox News the incident may void her global entry status. That's part of a program that lets low-risk U.S. citizens board planes quicker. Fox 31 Denver reports she's also planning on fighting the fine in the courts. This could be the solution to world hunger. Researchers in Finland have successfully made food from electricity and carbon dioxide captured from the air. So could this new technology help feed the world? The food creating system uses a bioreactor, which contains water, microbes, and nutrients, such as nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. The electric current triggers electrolysis of the water, and with carbon dioxide captured from the air, the end result of the chemical reaction produces a powdery edible compound. The compound contains more than 50% protein, 25% carbohydrates, and the rest is fats and nucleic acids. The bioreactor can be set up anywhere with renewable energy, such as solar power or wind energy. No word on how this stuff tastes, but who cares when according to the UN, 795 million people are undernourished globally, and another 2 billion people are expected to join them by 2050. Maybe, just maybe, this could help. Mickey D's is going on a diet. McDonald's is attempting to make their Happy Meals healthier, and it's pissing people off. Cheeseburgers and chocolate milk are getting booted off the Happy Meal menu in a bid to get meals down to 600 calories. Officially, the listed kids' meal choices are either nuggets or a hamburger. But the cheeseburger will still be available upon request, and the chocolate milk will eventually make a comeback after it's reformulated to have less sugar. Basically, McDonald's just wants to be able to advertise the Happy Meal as being healthy, even though it's just garbage. Still, some people are shooked. Angry parents are taking offense that McDonald's is trying to sell their kids what they can and can't eat. And then there's those folks who just don't think it's right to take away an iconic fast food offering. Meanwhile, child obesity rates are soaring in the U.S., but thank God eating and fatness have no correlation. Woman might go to jail for selling homemade food. Police are going after a California woman's home cooking, but not so much because they want to eat it. Stockton resident Marlisa Ruelas had been part of a Facebook food group where members shared and sometimes sold food. In December 2015, someone sought out the single mother of six in order to buy her signature ceviche. That someone turned out to be an undercover investigator on a sting operation. And Ruelas was caught red-handed selling food without a permit. 
She and a dozen others were cited for misdemeanors, and all except Reyes accepted a plea deal. She turned it down after discovering the terms of her offer, carried the heaviest punishment of them all. She's now awaiting trial and may face up to a year in jail if found guilty. Online opinion has largely been in Reyes' favor. She wasn't operating a full-scale business and probably only earned a couple of bucks from occasional sales. Such a stellar job using taxpayers' money, America.